How's it going, you sexy beast? My name is Jurathamus, and today I want to take a step into a more broad tutorial series where we learn how to be better at first-person shooters. In this episode, we'll be covering gaming mice, settings, sensitivity, and some registry edits to help us get the most out of our game. As I'm sure you've noticed by now, we'll be focusing on the PC side of things, as that's where most of my gaming focus resides. In this video, we've got some gameplay of Planicide 2 and Battlefield 4, both of which are fantastic first-person shooter experiences and ones that I'm sure you've seen or heard of before. Everything discussed in this video will be timestamped and linked in the description below for your convenience of reference. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into our tool of destruction, the mouse. For this particular video, I'm using the Razer Latch Assist mouse with a polling rate of 1000 Hz and a maximum DPI of 4000. Your results may vary due to having varying hardware, but everything covered here is more of a generality than any specifics, so you should be fine. If you're still using a trackball mouse of any kind or are looking for a good beginner gaming mouse, then the Razer Death Adder can't be beat. There's plenty of Logitech gaming mice that are far superior, but will run you beyond $100, so the Death Adder is a fantastic place to start in regards to what value you're getting for your dollar. But hardware is just the beginning. It's digging into the software of your operating system where things start to get juicy, and eventually we'll shift into the actual game settings to fine tune everything. In order to fully remove any mouse acceleration or odd miscalculations of mouse movements that your operating system imposes on you, you'll have to jump into the control panel. Go to your mouse settings and click on the pointer options tab. From there, go ahead and disable enhance pointer precision and drag the slider completely to the left, then move the slider over to the right and place it on the sixth notch of the 11 present. Go ahead, click apply, and close this window, then open up your display settings. This can be done by right clicking your desktop, going to personalization, and display. Make sure the display's percentage is listed at 100%. If it already is, then good job. If it isn't, select the bubble and hit apply. Doing these two steps presents us a 1 to 1 ratio of movement from your mouse to be correlated to your screen and to cause the next step to work properly. Next, we'll download a registry fix that completely removes any mouse acceleration that Windows likes to use. If you're unaware of what mouse acceleration is, it essentially speeds up the movement of your mouse based on how rapidly it is moving. So if you move your mouse up one inch within five seconds, it may not actually move the cursor or crosshair as far as moving your mouse up one inch within a single second even though the distance moved is exactly the same. It's that kind of inconsistency that can make or break a firefight for you and is rather hard to adjust for when you're getting fired upon by an enemy. So download and extract the RAR file listed in the description below and run whichever registry entry fits your particular operating system and setup. After running the registry edit, go ahead and restart your computer to go ahead and finalize all the changes. Now that Windows isn't messing with our mice settings, let's go ahead and look at our mouse software. There's only a couple of things here that I'd like to make note of, the polling rate and the DPI. Both of these are based on personal preference and it all comes down to how you want your games to handle. For me, I've set the polling rate as high as it can go, which for me is 1000 Hz, or about one millisecond for my cursor to react to the movement of the mouse. There's not really any reason to touch any others, just set the polling rate as high as it can go and forget about it. It's the DPI, or dots per inch, which really makes the difference in your gaming experience. This isn't clearly defined as, set it to the highest number and you're good, since it directly correlates to how sensitive your mouse is. The lower the number, the more precise you can be with your mouse, but your cursor movements will be much slower. On the contrary, the higher the number, the faster your cursor or crosshair will move. Personally, I use 2000 DPI when I'm working on my desktop since I use three monitors, but when I go in game, I drop the DPI to 500, which helps a lot with tracking targets easily. You'll have to play around with the numbers yourself in order to get the best feel for it. I don't recommend exceeding 1000 DPI since you'll just be scooting your character's gun all over the place unless you drop your sensitivity way down in game. Speaking of in game, let's go ahead and jump in and see what all these settings mean. 
For Planetside 2, I use 0.29 mouse sensitivity, which affects your hip fire aiming speeds. Scope mouse sensitivity affects how fast your weapons move while aiming down the sights with any scope of 3.4 times and higher. I have mine at 0.37, which allows me to generally keep the same aimed speed across all three of these settings. Lastly, we have aimed mouse sensitivity, and mine is 0.32, which is just enough to easily keep track of enemies moving perpendicular to me, while also giving me the ability to twitch react to any enemies that may enter my peripheral. With my mouse pad, I'm able to do a full 360 in about 8 inches without aiming down sights. While I'm aiming down sights with a 2 times reflex, I can pull a 180 within about the same distance, and with any scopes of higher magnification, about a 90 degree turn with the majority of my map. Keep in mind to always disable any raw mouse output, input, vertical synchronization, or smoothing of any kind. These tend to do more harm than good, such as using extra processing power to help smooth out your mouse, or adding further input lag, which can add more variables into the mix that we do not want. Hopping into Battlefield 4, it's a little bit different and slightly more simplistic since there's only one sensitivity across the board. I have mine set to 20% and still run with 500 DPI on my mouse. If you're constantly sniping from long range, you may want to drop your sensitivity further to help make your shots even more precise. Then again, if you're running around with a shotgun, you might need to increase your sensitivity to help nail in that twitchy feel to your fast reaction time. To keep my aiming consistent with how it is in Planetside 2, I can pull a 360 within 8 inches without aiming down sights. Once I aim down the sights with just a normal reflex, I can pull a 180 in about the same distance. Keep in mind that what feels comfortable to me may not feel comfortable for you. Toy around with all the settings you have available to both your DPI and in-game sensitivity to get that perfect feel for your gameplay. Remember that muscle memory takes a good 30 minutes to retrain, so play around with new settings for a solid hour before giving up on them or making another tweak. Also, if you have any other tips or tricks in regards to getting the most out of your gaming experience, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear some more input on being even more badass in first person shooters. If you guys found this video informative or helpful in any way, please give it a big ass thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs it down and let me know what I can improve upon. I want to make this a series for gamers of all ranges to better their game and would love to hear some input. The next video's topic will be all about performance and how to reach that essential 60 frames per second. Thank you all so very much for watching, and if you would like to see more videos like these, then go ahead and subscribe. It's free.